Hi, my name is Mario and my background is in law and finance. I have 15 years of work experience in corporate finance and I recently joined Applied Materials. I'm here with Lori to learn more about materials engineering and why it's such a big deal for the tech industry. Hi, my name is Lori. I work here at Applied Materials and Process Engineering. I have an advanced degree in material science and engineering and over 20 years of experience in the solar and semiconductor industry. A lot of people like Mario have heard about materials engineering, but they don't really understand what it is. And I'm here to explain it in simple terms. Mario, before we get into materials engineering, tell me, what's one device that you can't live without? Well, I think I could live without my work computer, <laughs> but I don't think I could live without my cell phone. Me too. I can't function without my cell phone. These devices keep getting smarter and faster and smaller. Did you know that today's cell phones have more computing power, meaning they can perform more computations per second than the computers that NASA used to send astronauts to the moon back in 1969? Wow. Yeah. Do you ever wonder what technology makes this possible? What drives these devices? Well, I read enough financial news to have seen the pictures of CEOs holding these devices, right? It must be the microchip. Exactly. Chips are in practically every modern day device. And one reason that they are becoming so powerful is because of materials engineering. Okay, so I've definitely read about materials engineering, but I'm not familiar with the details. Okay, so let's talk about it. All materials have properties, electrical, chemical, thermal properties, and these affect how they behave. Materials engineers understand these properties and they use that knowledge to design products that meet certain criteria. So let's take an example that most people have experience with. Do you like to cook? I'm Peruvian, so I love to cook. Great. Think about the pots and pans in your kitchen. They could be made from a lot of different materials, copper, stainless steel, cast iron. All these materials have different properties and so they cook differently. So let's start with copper. Copper is an excellent conductor of heat, it has a high thermal conductivity. So when you heat up your copper pan, the heat spreads really fast and the whole pan's at the same temperature. So your food cooks really evenly, but copper's not very resistant to acids. So if you cook an acidic food like tomato sauce, the copper pan can't really handle that. So let's say you choose a stainless pan instead, but it doesn't conduct heat as well. So you might have a hot spot here, a cold spot here. Your food might start to burn. This food still needs to cook. So one solution to that problem is to take a layer of copper, sandwich it in between the stainless steel, and now you have a pot that's very durable and it conducts heat better than the stainless pot. And that's materials engineering. And how does materials engineering play into making chips? The more transistors you have, the more computations you can perform, the more complex things your device can do. But to fit more transistors on the chip without your device becoming really big, you have to make the transistors smaller. Advanced chips can have as many as 15 billion transistors and over 60 miles of copper wiring. Wow, that's incredible to think about. Exactly. So as transistors keep getting smaller and smaller, there are more challenges that require materials engineering to solve. Materials engineering is really vital to the future of technology. Okay, so that makes sense. Materials engineering, incredibly important to improving the technology. Materials engineering is very important, but it's not just materials engineers. We need software, electrical, mechanical engineers. We need chemists and physicists and all of these people in order to build this sophisticated equipment. How does applied materials fit into the industry? So applied makes this highly sophisticated equipment and the software and the process technology that the chip makers need in order to manufacture chips. Chips are just becoming so complex and our tools are really foundational in enabling this technology. So when you use your smartwatch, when you drive your smart car, they're relying on devices that were produced with applied materials equipment. That's really so interesting to think about. Thank you so much, Lori, for spending time with me and teaching me about materials engineering. Oh, thank you.